On the morning of June 4th, we had a short flight from Almaty, Kazakhstan to Tashkent, Uzbekistan. The flight was almost shorter than the time it took to get through Uzbeki customs at the Tashkent airport, a problem that reoccurred at each of our three later crossings of the Uzbekistan border. Tashkent is the capital and largest city of Uzbekistan. Although under other names, the city has existed in this location since about 500 BC. Destroyed by Genghis Khan in the 13th century, the city's population and culture gradually revived as a prominent strategic center of scholarship, commerce, and trade along the Silk Road. In 1865, it was conquered by the Russian Empire, and in Soviet times witnessed major growth and demographic changes due to forced deportations from throughout the Soviet Union. Today, Tashkent remains a multi-ethnic population with ethnic Uzbeks as the majority. Virtually destroyed by an earthquake in 1966, Tashkent has been completely rebuilt into the very modern city that it is today. Although not actually on the schedule, our trip leader, Jama, arranged for us to attend an opera at the Tashkent Concert Hall, the actual opera house being closed for renovation. It was an Uzbeki comic opera named Masara's Escapades. In general, I love opera, and this was definitely an interesting experience, but even with a synopsis in the program, I don't think any of us had a clue what was going on on stage. It was free for us, though, so I could deal with that.
There wasn't much to see in Old Town, but it was surprising that even today some buildings are still made of clay and straw. And many of these residences were not hovels either. Behind those clay and straw walls were some fairly nice homes. This is one of the most important sites in Tashkent, a mausoleum rebuilt in the 16th century to contain the remains of the 10th century Muslim holy man, Abu Bakr Kafal Ash-Shashi. A great scholar and theologian, Ash-Shashi, devoted his life to the spread of Islam and religious education. The nearby Tilya Sheik Mosque complex consists of the 19th century Tilya Sheik Mosque, a museum, and two madrasas. The most important building in the complex is the Mui Mubarak Madrasa, which contains the oldest existing copy of the Quran dating back to the 7th century. Photography was not allowed, but as with almost everything else, you can always find photos online. Hair supposedly from Mohammed's head is also kept here, and the name of the building in fact means sacred hair. Hazrat Imam Mosque was constructed in just four months in 2007 on the instruction of the Uzbek president. This is the official religious center of the entire republic. Fronted by two 50-meter tall minarets, the mosque is Tashkent's largest place of worship. The Korsu Bazaar, which is literally across a parking lot from the mosque complex, like other bazaars throughout Central Asia, is a combination farmer's market and flea market. A lot of the food there really looked good, but we didn't dare try anything other than candies and bread. After lunch, we took a short ride on the Tashkent subway. Like other Soviet-built subways, the stations are very ornate. Again, for security reasons, photography was not allowed. But, like I said earlier, you can find anything online, and I wanted to provide some kind of idea of what it was like. The Monument of Independence was erected in 1991 and replaced a statue of Lenin, which was previously at that spot. At the top of the statue, marking the sovereignty of Uzbekistan, is a large golden globe with outlines of the territorial borders of the country. But the engraved territory of the Republic does not repeat the geographical location of the country, as it symbolizes the desire of the young independent state 
to join the world community. This is a memorial at the Square of Memory dedicated to those Uzbekis who did not return from World War II. Next to an eternal flame is the figure of the grieving mother who waited in vain for the return of her sons from the war fronts. The names of those who laid down their lives in the field of fight are written in gold letters into the memory book, which is also placed at the square. We don't think of people in places like Uzbekistan as having been affected by the war. But more than 300,000 Uzbeki soldiers perished in combat while serving in the Soviet army. 